welcome to Let Me Bore You To Sleep. My name is Jason Newland and please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. So, just to give you an update, I might have mentioned this yesterday, I can't remember, there are no longer any websites uh, that I'm using, Uh, the only podcasts I have are the ones that are spread all around uh, the different places. So the home for my podcast are Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. So I pay for that service. But the podcasts are shared with, you know, on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes... Castbox, Stitcher, Podbean. Oh, there's so many, lots and lots. It's a huge long list of different podcast hosts where I am. Uh, so yeah, and apparently, according to the stats, I'm also can be found on Alexa. So it'd be really cool if you could test this out because I don't have Alexa. So if you if you have an Alexa, maybe see if by just asking for "Let me bore you to sleep," it comes up. Maybe you need to say my name as well, not "Let me bore you to sleep." My name as well. I mean, my name. I'm being very pedantic. Oh, did I tell you? I've ordered some soundproof foam for my walls. Um, I've not got enough to cover the whole of the walls, but I think I've got 24 tiles coming. And I ordered them on Amazon. So I'm... My plan is I probably should get them by Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, although they did say by the 7th of May, which is quite a long way off, but who knows, maybe it won't be May and maybe it'll be earlier, I don't know. But when I do get them, I've already planned that I'm going to put them on the right hand side of the chair on the wall and then behind the chair on the wall there and see if it I don't know I just I want to get to the point where there's no sound other than just my voice and I know kind of there isn't that much sound other than my voice Um, and I've put Andre in his cage to do this recording so I'm now going to maybe not every time but it just it was a little bit all over me yesterday He also jumped onto the microphone, so I had to edit that bit out as well. So I had to go through it, and it's a bit annoying. So these soundproof foams, they're basically for recording studios. So I'm going to have them, hopefully, the plan is to have them covering the entire room, including the door. But they're black. 
so I'm thinking I'm going to have to do something about that because it's otherwise it's going to be just a completely dark room which I don't really want I've got quite big windows to let light in but I don't know and this yeah just it's not that I want to look at white walls which I've got at the moment but you can get different coloured ones so what I might do is get the black ones got relatively cheap four to start with not four to start with two to start with not two to start with but you know I'm in mean, 18 or however many I've got ordered and I'm going to try and figure a way to cover up the left side of the chair because at the moment it's just all open so I don't know how I'm going to do it but I'm going to figure a way so and then something on top you know maybe have it uh, five foot high or something so I can sit down in it and ideally have it all blocked off just this little section of the room for when I make recordings I did think about getting myself a shed and I know that not many people have a shed in their living room it's, it's kind of a possibly an unusual thing but I seriously thought about it I'm still thinking about it but it's going to take up it's not going to be like a huge shed I'm not going to be you know making I don't know doing gardening and welding and things like that in a shed fixing bikes I'm not going to be doing it's not that kind of a shed you know no one's going to knock on the door so where's Jason oh he, he's in his shed I'll go and get him just walk to the other side of the room Jason your dad's on the phone I told him he was in your shed and then I have to say, it's not my shed, it's my recording studio. It looks like a shed to me, but it's a recording studio. Do you see any tools in here? She said, I see one big one standing in front of me. Hey, stop being so rude. So I thought about getting a shed, a little one that would just be big enough to fit my chair in maybe not this chair because I quite like to get a, a quiet chair not necessarily one that reclines either I don't need that just a comfortable chair and then soundproof it soundproof the shed and because it's less space, it would take less money to soundproof it. And also put soundproofing on the bottom as well. So hopefully, it would be completely quiet, silent, apart from my voice. Which is what I want, really. Although, 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 although... I think there's something quite nice about having bit of background sound in a sense of it's, it's less sterile you know it's real it's you're capturing a moment in time even if it is just the boiler gurgling away in the background or Andre squirting out a big poo 
in the corner you know it's it's all part of the the magic I can hear him now I think he can hear me he's uh, I put him into his cage early it was about it's now 1.45 I put him into his cage about half past nine so I was going to go to bed then I went to bed and I just didn't want to I was just looking on a tablet and and I thought actually I'd like to make some more recordings so that's what I did plus I've been in bed all day so I don't didn't need to go to bed early I just I thought it might make a change I could go to sleep now though actually I made a deep sleep whisper hypnosis recording about an hour an hour and a half ago and I fell asleep while I was making it I kept, wake, I kept waking up so I was counting down from 100 to 1 and once I got down to about 30 I was really struggling to keep track of the numbers and I think I did repeat a couple of numbers twice that would be repeating them wouldn't it so yeah so I hopefully no one will really care or notice that but I was so tired when I got down to the last 10 because purposely I left more of a gap as I got lower down the numbers so I started from 100 to 99 no 100 to 91 with a there's still a, a gap of like 100 99 98 so it was, it was a kind of that kind of gap and then each number now the next 10 from 90 to 81 no, 90, yeah, 90, I don't know, 90 to 81, there was a longer gap, like 90, So I was kind of, you know, doing that and continuing that as I went down. And then from all the different numbers were 80, what's the next one? 70 to 61. So again, it was like 70. Sixty-nine. 
68. And I was whispering the whole time as well. And when I whisper, I know I talk softly when I do these. Um, because, I don't know, I find that yelling doesn't help people to sleep. You know, shouting wouldn't really uh, quite do the trick. But even, I don't even really speak at a normal um, volume that I would if I was talking to someone generally I suppose because I prefer this volume to talk this is um, my I quite like this volume this kind of I wonder how many more times I can get volume into this conversation. Volume. 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 So yeah, I quite like this level. It feels comfortable. feels uh, comfortable in my throat. It feels... That oh, sounds weird feels comfortable in my throat just on my throat it feels there's oh, there's no strain so if I was talking loudly then there'd be a, a bit of a strain but I'm not talking deeply I'm just but I'm not talking high either I'm just maybe it's a little bit deeper really deep I can't do deep Really, I can do croaky a little bit. I do have, uh, I think as I've got older, my voice has got a bit croakier. Not croaky, but it's got more, perhaps more character to it. Or maybe croaky is the right word. I don't think, I don't think, I'm, I don't think I've got a raspy voice. Hello. Welcome to jasonrend.com You know, I don't feel I'm quiet. I think gentle. Gentle is... I think it's important, really, to be fair. Because this is supposed to be a gentle session. A gentle experience. Uh, as well as being slightly absurd at times, a little bit silly. Uh, I talk about personal stuff, as you know as well, if you're a regular listener. I do open up, but I also tell lots of lies. I make stuff up. But I also tell my deepest secrets to you as well. And I mix it all together so you've no idea what's what. Ha <laughs> ha. That's not quite that dark. But I, I like the idea of honesty. I'm not saying I'm always honest because clearly I'm constantly making stuff up, as I said, on here. But just... I think it's about being honest to yourself. And I like the idea of you know we all kind of maybe perhaps me less so because I don't work at the moment. But, you know, with jobs, we have these kind of roles. I'm not talking about food, although I could eat a roll. I could eat a sausage roll. Not a, yeah, either a roll with a sausage in it or a sausage roll. And I'd be just as happy with a vegan 
or vegetarian sausage. I don't care. I'm, I'm, you know what? It's really weird. If I go out to a restaurant, my favourite part of the whole thing is the rolls, the bread rolls you get. Because they're beautiful and they're warm and you get butter, little little sachets of butter which is really cheap. It's I like that. You know, sometimes you go into a restaurant and it's I don't go into expensive restaurants and I don't really go into restaurants hardly ever, but even in the past, during my life, because I am I've been around a while, I have been in restaurants. And I haven't been in many, like, top class ones, you know, expensive ones. I'd like to go because I embrace my superficialism. So superficialism, is that a word? I love the idea of going into a really expensive restaurant and being bought a lovely meal. Don't want to pay for it myself. Don't want to go that far. I don't need it that badly. But I'd love to do that. Just go somewhere, just go somewhere beautiful, some beautiful restaurant in a wonderful hotel. So if you, any of you want to take me out for lunch, um, it really, I won't expect anything. It really is just pay the bill and I'm happy. Pay for my food, free food is all I ever need. I'm happy with that free food, especially in a restaurant. But you know, even supermarket food is. I like free stuff. It's not because I'm tight. I just. <laughs> I like. I've lived on my own for so long. Having someone else cook for me. Like proper, like nice food is a treat, and it doesn't happen very often. Uh, it's really like twice a year, maybe, uh, unless I go to the Wimpy, but that's not really the same. But bread rolls, I went on this course, and it was uh, when I was counseling for a living when I, you know self-employed counsellor I um, I went on this course and it was a special training course that lasted for I think a week or two weeks I forget I think it was a, yeah it might be five days and it was in a hotel it's I, funny enough. It's in the hotel. It's just near where I live now, but at the time I didn't live anywhere near it. It was a heck of a walk. It's a long, long way. And uh, after the first day, I managed to get lifts and you know get get back and forward. But the first day I walked up there, and it was wow. It's a long way. I wonder if I'll ever live near here. And I. I went in there and they as you go into the hotel grounds they got these signs either side saying what it is and then these banners these big like wooden banners either side as well on the grass sometimes they're just bare I don't mean it. There's not a picture of a bear. I mean, they're, they're just, there's nothing there. It's just like a white board. Um, not like a white board that you write on, like in a school or in an office. Um, I was going to say, or a betting shop, but I don't know if they still have those boards in betting shops. Everything's computerised, I imagine. I wonder if they still have the, the little betting slips that you'd fill in and you'd hand it over and you had to be smoking in order to hand it over I think 
I don't think you was allowed in betting shops unless you smoked. There always used to be a pub next door. So people could spend their winnings. Well. And go in after losing everything and feel sorry for themselves. You know, which is... I never used to bet. I had bet. But I never... I never got into it. And I think the, the I was lucky because in life I'm not lucky regarding my brain when it comes to numbers. And I don't know if I've not been diagnosed officially with any kind of dyspraxia or anything, but I, my, my brain switches off. I think that's why I struggle a little bit when I count down. Um, it's not that I don't know what comes up after 93 or below 93. I can count. I've never tried to count continuously to see how many how many numbers I could get to. You know, just but I know num I know numbers. I can do add in subtraction. Uh, you know, just the basic stuff to a degree, and then I'll uh, I'll use a calculator. But even when I've got all the numbers written out, so when I'm doing the stats for the month for the podcasts on Spreaker, so for example, January this this year, two thousand nineteen. I had 26,258. February 2019, I had 31,534 downloads. In March last month, 2019, I had 39,158 downloads. As so far, the downloads I've got since November is about 130,000 so it's growing it's quite a nice little number Um, but in order to get those stats I had to write down each day and then add it up on a calculator sometimes it takes me three three times to get it it's not that I get the, the number wrong it's that I just lose track of where I am because when I look at a bunch of numbers my brain starts it's like that part of my brain goes to the toilet just has a lot of toilet break I don't mean just goes to the toilet there and then but whatever part of my, is it's responsible of that part of my brain it seems to just go on a break whenever I need to use it Oh, Jason's got a calculator out. Dinner time. You know, it's like it just goes off. It's like, unless I'm left on my own. Using the part of my brain that's devoted to tap dancing. You know, it's just. I'm cleaning pipes. Just, you know, it's like, oh no, I just need that part of my brain working. But it just doesn't seem to. I'm at peace with that kind of and uh, again I've no idea how I got here there was a reason for this adding up stuff it's all to do with bread rolls really I love bread rolls absolutely love bread rolls i tell you this this is a story it's a bread roll story so this rest, this hotel, it's um, it's all right. You know, I've had a friend stay there once, and it's okay. It's 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 a nice enough place. The restaurant is yeah, it's okay. Um, yeah, it's, we had nice dinners every day when I was in there doing the um, the course, the counselling uh, thing, week-long thing. 
end. It was actually, the course was on depression. And you know what I said, the first thing I said, I said, what's the worst, what's the hardest thing you have to deal with with clients? And I said, depression. They want started laughing. Uh, for some reason. But it is. It was, it's, you don't have any of the really other serious stuff without depression and it's someone that's just so oh, I can't I don't want to go into that but it's it's such a difficult subject and it's something that needs gently a bit of gentle love a bit of gentle um changes, slow, gentle, kind changes. No idea why I'm just making it up as I go along, I don't know. I must have learned something on that course. All I can remember is the bread rolls. Apparently the course cost about, for each person, about two or three thousand pounds. Didn't have to pay anything towards it. But um, if we didn't do it, we couldn't continue working for them. It was uh, Mind. So they're a really um, big charity to help people with uh, mental health issues. And they also helped me as well with my when I was, yeah, had issues with bipolar a few years back they kind of yeah, helped me out and also signposted me sort of gave me a few a little bit of help but the bread rolls so we all I remember we were all sitting on this long table and a few of us were sitting with each other I suppose just like normal like being at school is not or in prison I suppose you you sit next to the people that you know don't you and I was sitting there and the bread rolls came out the dinner wasn't ready yet though the thing about bread thing about bread is I'm not a big fan of bread kind of I do like bread like fresh bread but I think once it's once it's past a day it's not quite as fluffy and I love the smell of bread fresh bread in the oven it's lovely but I don't bake my own bread because you can buy it in shops and it's just easier I'm saying you can buy it in shops like you wouldn't know but you really can and apparently what a state state agents used to do in the old days I don't know if they still do it they probably don't have time um, but they used to before people came around to view the house or the flat or apartment or whatever they would put breadcrumbs on a baking tray and put them in the oven so basically they'd crumble up a couple of uh, slices of bread and just put them in the oven and the aroma of the bread crumbs made the house smell wonderful probably apart from those that have yeast issues I don't don't mean like yeast infections but I don't know, I don't know what the thing is if you don't, some people can't eat bread can they, but 
I like toast. But bread rolls. And I don't know what it is about restaurant bread rolls, but they're just perfect. I don't like bread rolls generally. I don't go into, I don't know, supermarket, Tesco or Sainsbury's or name a, name a, a supermarket, you know, where you are, I don't know. Because I'm, I imagine, because you're from all around the world, so you can have different supermarkets in Mexico, different named supermarkets in Russia, uh, Portugal, France, Spain, Canada, Australia, you know, because people from all over the world listen to this, and it's weird to get your head around it sometimes, it's like, wow, you mean when you go out of your house and you turn left, there's no post box? No, because I live in a different place. There's no post box there. Wow. You mean you don't walk through the park and there's a petrol station? No, I live near a beach. It's like, wow. It's like getting my head around like other people's lifestyles. It might seem a silly thing, but just... I guess not everybody lives near a supermarket. And some people, maybe if you live in a big country, like Russia or Canada or America, Australia, pretty much every country other than England. England's one of the smallest countries in the world, but, you know, land size. But, you know, traveling like half an hour or an hour to get to the supermarket in your car like I don't have a car but then I don't live in America or Russia not that that really matters but I, mean, I had a friend once and I was seriously considering moving in with him like to his area maybe you know lodge sleep in one of his rooms and then maybe get my get my own place get a job you know this is quite a few years ago and he said to me you can't live around here without a car I said what do you mean he said you can't live around here without a car so I visited him just round the corner I mean we're literally five minute walk around the corner was a row of shops post office video shop uh, you know news agents and then another three minute walk was a massive supermarket okay well I don't need a car to get food I don't need a car to buy stamps don't need a car to buy a newspaper don't need a car to rent a DVD even though DVD rental shops don't exist anymore not in this country as far as I know they're like dinosaurs I wonder if in a few million years it'd be like a dinosaur someone will like dig up a an old blockbusters store and I'll be like walking in it's like look at all these things on the walls they've got pictures on them these little what are they they're plastic covers with pictures and these bags of popcorn as well near the counter wow and this what's a box set section I wonder what a box set is set of boxes I suppose I wonder where the boxes were kept I don't know a blockbuster perhaps it was a religion 
Wow, we've found an old religion. Maybe this could be the salvation. No, maybe not. And I don't think there was a blockbusters there. There was just a like a independent uh, video shop. Because they didn't. The thing is, they were called video shops, even though in England, pretty much, I'd say from two thousand and four you pretty much couldn't get videos anymore in video shops you know they had a they had a few left before that but they went to dvd long before but they still kept the videos around for people like me that didn't have a dvd player and i could have i could have easily got one i could have bought one easily i don't know why i didn't I don't know, just... If it's, a tech, it's like learning a new technology. It's like learning a new language. But it's nothing like learning a new language, though, is it? So what I did in 2004, I was actually in Blockbusters. And... There was this thing behind the counter it might not be behind the counter it might be near the counter but there was this television with a DVD player connected you know sort of underneath the screen and it was it wasn't big but then I was only living in small rooms so I didn't really need a big television but it still cost like £150 or something I was like, ah, and as like 95 or 97% of all of the films were on DVD, I decided to make the change. And at that point, I'd already given away my big video collection. Because probably in 2003, because during 2002 and 2003, I was buying lots of videos. You know, generally I'd buy the you know, three for ten pound, you know, from HMV or Virgin. Although I don't think Virgin's around anymore, and I don't mean Virgins, although I'd never met one. Um, I wonder if they're a myth. So yeah, I think the VH the, was it MPV M MHV MVH HMV. They I'm not sure if they're on their way out as well. But I used to go in on a Saturday afternoon, always at the end when the shop was closing, and. I'll be honest, making decisions has never been my biggest uh, quality, let's say, my best quality. You know, I'm constantly changing my mind about stuff, just just how it is, unfortunately it seems, but I think it is. No, it's not. Sometimes. So all the staff would be waiting to go home and I'd still be there. And they wanted to cash up the till, but they couldn't cash a till up until they took the money from me. And again, back then, most transactions, or at least uh, a lot more transactions were money than they are now. I'd say probably majority of transactions in Retail are probably made on card now. Plastic. That's a guess. I don't know if it's true. I think it probably is though. But I uh, used to wait. And I'd end up buying. I don't know. Maybe. 12 videos. Or 6 videos. Or. 
and just trying to think of ways, things to spend my money on. Because I didn't have any internet at the time. Didn't have, I couldn't get a phone because in 2000, between September 2001, or I don't know, end of September, end of 2001 till February, I don't know, March 2004, I was living in a place that didn't allow telephones inside the because it was like a YMCA place and because the address wasn't recognised and it was probably quite a there's a lot of homeless people living there and um, for some reason BT refused to put a phone line in so I had no internet for the first time in I don't know, a couple of years. When I first started getting the internet, probably 99, 2000, 99, something like that. I still didn't have, th and then I got the internet eventually. Eventually BT allowed me to get the internet in 2000 and probably, yeah, End of 2003, I had it for a while and then I moved out. I think, I think I got the internet in the new place I moved into. I'm pretty sure I did. But I don't know if I did or not. Also, I think BT wouldn't give me a phone because I owed them money. I forgot about that. Yeah, they were sending me bailiff letters. It's good to forget stuff, isn't it? So I paid that, but I, I paid it off. But I think they... Not that they weren't impressed, because I don't they, I don't think there's any like personal uh, emotions involved in it. But... I don't mean in it, but in it, in it. Not like it. it's cold, in it. And so I did get the internet back. But then I moved out of there. See, I can't remember having the internet in 2004. But I must have done, surely. I had it at work. Because I was working in a retail little gift shop during 2004. Until, what was it, about August time. And then I got a job in insurance. Must have had the internet. Really can't remember. I know that I had a room that didn't have any heating at all. No radiators. It was a fair sized room. I remember my landlord came in one day and to collect the rent and he came in, usually I try and pay him in the kitchen because we had a kitchen right at the top of the house because it was quite a big house I was at the top and I think there was how many rooms was there one two one two one three four there's six rooms so you go into the, yeah, if you go into the front of the house, you have to go up the stairs, up the steps. Oh, there was also a, um, 
a flat downstairs like in the basement but that was separate it was still owned by the same man um, but we had to go up the steps go in this big old house and the first two rooms downstairs you have to go in walk up because I got to know the people that lived there walk straight ahead and then turn right to one room and go straight ahead into the other room you couldn't just walk in because it was their rooms but as I said I got to know I got friendly with the people that lived there and then walk up the stairs I think yeah there was a kitchen downstairs and that might have been to the right yeah as you walked in to the right there was a kitchen so that was a the kitchen and then upstairs on the second floor all the fr- I never understand is it if you're on the ground floor the next floor is the first floor isn't it but for me the first floor should be the ground floor anyway up the stairs the next level there was two rooms one on the left and then walk up a little bit turn right and then on the left hand side is another room I got really well with him and then when you come out of his room turn left well come out of his room straight ahead was the stairs that went round that went up to my place to, to my level but if you come out of his room turn left and there's the bathroom so there was only one bathroom for the six people but there was on the stairs going down the first set of stairs going up on the left hand side there was a toilet so there was a bathroom that had a toilet in it not in the actual bath but there there was separate with a sink which was also separate and the the toilet was you know on its own as well so there was at least two places to you know have a dump um, or whatever you wanted to do in there have a sandwich and you go upstairs and I think they turned round the, the stairs were kind of twirly not twirly stairs but you know they went up and then they turned round a little bit and went up again and you get up the stairs my door was the first on the left there was another room next to me which was so if you come out of my room directly ahead was the kitchen our kitchen before you got to the kitchen on the left hand side that was my neighbour it was his room so I got on really well with him as well and we basically there was no rules about who used which kitchen other than the obvious is us at the top would use the top kitchen that made sense but then kind of anyone else could as well but my friend who was downstairs so if you go down the stairs and basically you just walk across and knock on his door go in he had um, his own kitchen counter with cupboards and all that stuff so he used to make food and he had a microwave and a kettle and all that stuff so he used to make his own food and stuff in there because I think what he said is when he moved in he had he had I think he was he'd been left a little bit of money like a few grand and he spent it all on the room got a nice carpet a new bed and he decided he was just going to stay there forever you know and he may still be there I don't know 
I kept in contact with him when I moved out for a few years actually and then as time goes by I stopped caring <laughs> as time goes by it's just like normal isn't it time goes by and we just I moved out of the town I don't I don't go back to that town hardly ever uh, every few years really now it's 20 minutes on a train it's not even very far but it's too far for me maybe I did need a car even if the supermarket was round the corner from my friends maybe I did need a car to get there I didn't really think about it I actually won a microwave at work it was a, like a sales competition and I won a microwave I'm not going to count on my left foot the amount of things that I've won in my life and there's once years ago I went to a pub and I was probably 17, 18 and someone says do you want a raffle ticket and I said what he said do you want a raffle ticket I said a raffle ticket he said yeah so why are you saying it like that he said what, what do you mean like what I said oh no don't worry he said I said uh, what's it for and basically I won't go through because that's going to hurt my voice so I talk like him Basically, they had pre-recorded old horse races from like years ago, and you just had to bet on them who's going to win. So, and it was on a telly, and they just showed it's like a, a video, a video recorded uh, thing. And they played it, and you know, he gambled by picking a horse. I suppose really that's what I did. So I got a lot. I got a ticket. My horse was called Big Bum Jelly Belly. I don't know, it's something silly like that. And uh, the thing is, I was busy. I didn't have time to wait around for the match or for the for the the race. So I said, okay, well, I'll get it because it's for charity and you could win. There was a few prizes you could win. Um, I don't know, a pack of burgers, uh, miniature hovercraft, you know, it's general things you get in that kind of stuff. Um, a really, really tatty Santa Claus beard where the elastic was actually broken but they said we can get a new elastic um, for an extra cost of five pound I thought oh, okay so it's, there's a lot of weird things that are just like stuff that you'd think well yeah it's kind of normal but at the same time do I really want it is it really worth the the 50 pence that I'm paying for this ticket but it was for charity and so yeah, was, uh, I wasn't that emotionally invested in the whole thing. I think there was a big bar of chocolate I quite liked the look of. And it might have been during Easter period. And there might have been a big Easter egg with like, little chicks all around it. Not, not, I'm not sort of going back to the 50s and say it's chicks, lots of women. I'm talking uh, little yellow chicken chicks chick chicks but they, they might be made of chocolate but they might not have been might have been just decorative but it was covered in plastic you know like so it was, it was a big old thing probably the size of my head and I quite fancy the idea of that thank you very much oh yes I've always been partial to a bit of chocolate it's a little I'm not like I'm not going to lie I just really like chocolate I do so uh, 
what happened? I went out, did something. I can't remember what it was. I probably had to go and do me paper round or something. And uh, and someone else was in the pub with me at the time. They stayed in the pub. And then I saw them later and they said, you only gone and won. I said, what? He said, you've only gone and won. I said, won what? I said, don't know. Well, it's kind of anticlimactic, really, isn't it? If you told me I won and then you said, I don't know what it is. He said, we've just got to go and take your ticket in and collect your prize. So I went in, thinking that I probably won the little marshmallow smurf or whatever I was. And they said, oh, you've won the whiskey. And there's a big bottle of whiskey they gave me. I was like, wow. So I was really pleased with that. See, I don't drink whiskey. I had an experience of whiskey when I was very young. and uh, No, never, ever again, ever. All my saying that, though, I... I'm partial to a little bit of Jack Daniels every now and then but not whiskey whiskey I know it's technically it is whiskey but no that, that's nice normal whiskey is like scotch and ooh it's, it's, yeah bells and all the different yeah no not for me and the I had this so basically I gave it to my dad I think for a birthday present but my birthday's not for three months son I said yeah so do you want me to bring it back in three months then he said no no, it's okay I'll take it now so yeah so that's one thing I won what else have I won No, didn't didn't win anything. No, so I won this microwave. I think that's the only other thing I've ever won. And I was like, wow! And I carried it home, and I lived just round the corner. Because if I'd lived too far away, I probably would have just said keep it. Because I don't like to put any energy into anything really but I lived round the corner literally five minute walk I mean the hardest part was walking up all the stairs but you know I did it and I put the microwave down probably every three or four steps it it wasn't heavy at all but just on principle and uh, I don't like to sweat don't like to, you know, start. No, it's not right. Anyway, I got it upstairs, put it in the kitchen. There was already a microwave there, but I decided to use my own microwave because the other one looked like they'd been doing human experiments in there. So I like no. It it really did look like both the bathroom and the toilet were in use. And someone needed to go. It's just, it's just like, no, nah, I just wouldn't go near it. So I started using my microwave. And I told my friend, who lived next to me, he lived in the the, the room next to me. We'd gone really well. He, I said, you can use my microwave if you want. But just make sure that you clean it out afterwards. And he said, no. I said, what? He said, no. He said, I do not agree to your terms. I said, well, I'm letting you use my microwave. He said, yeah, and I appreciate the offer. But I refuse to be signing away my rights as a free individual to terms that I can't abide. I cannot stand the terms you've given to me. They are not acceptable to me on any level. 
I said, I just want you to make sure you don't make it dirty. He said, no. Of course it's going to get dirty. I'm going to be putting food in there. It's going to get dirty. You put stuff in the microwave, it gets, it pops and spurts everywhere. So we talking about the same thing. He said, yes, microwave. So, okay, good. I thought we'd maybe gone off track there for a bit. He said, stop being so rude to me. Bad enough that you're trying to, you know, push me into signing some contract that I don't want. I said, I'm not trying to get you to sign a contract. He said, well, put the contract away then. I said, okay, you don't have to sign anything. I'll put the contract away. Just, just don't let it get too messy, that's all. He said, no, I disagree. Well, it turned out that he was the one that was using the other microwave. So I was kind of quite happy that he didn't want to use mine. And that's when I discovered the joys of porridge. Now I've I've had some bad experiences with porridge. I'll tell you about it another time because that's a whole hour. That's a whole session on its own. It really is. Trust me. I used to work in a an old people's home, a residential home, as a cook, and that was a very difficult two weeks of my life. It really was. Um, it was difficult for everyone involved really anyway I discovered that by putting the milk in a bowl and putting the porridge oats in the bowl to a certain level on a certain temperature for a certain amount of time I played around with it but I got it just right and it came out perfect. Absolutely perfect. And I was so happy with it. And then I moved somewhere else. And I left the microwave there. Because I couldn't be bothered to lift it. I carry it downstairs. So I do believe that's all there is to say on the subject. Hopefully you've been nice and bored. And I've been licking my lips tonight for some reason. It's not a weird thing really. I mean, they're, they're my lips. If I want to lick them, I'll lick them. So I just, my mind went somewhere else then. So I'm going to go and I shall be back again tomorrow with another episode of Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Bye.